G'day and welcome back. Um, we've got all the machining done for the actual boat. Now I need to build a workbench and a building jig to build the boat on top of. And the building jig consists of those um, machine bits of plywood you see me working on. And the bench, well, it's rough as guts. It's uh, <laughs> not fine woodworking. Basically what I'm using is um, lengths of 2x4 framing timber, attitude adjusters, uh, for the rails and um, big 4x4 posts for the legs um, and whatever random hardware I have lying around my workshop, which is numerous and normally the wrong size. The, um, the requirement for this bench isn't to be pretty, it isn't to be particularly, uh, well yeah, it's not to be pretty. And all it needs to do is be flat and level and um, reliable to hold a, uh, hold a boat, an ultimate camper onto it. Um, I'm setting it up as, as a workbench first, but what I'm going to do is actually set it up so when I'm finished with the workbench, I can put these cross beams in, which are the curvy things you see, which are numbered, uh, which is where the, um, where the frames will go. And then what I'm going to do is just basically beef it up so it doesn't uh, twist or rack or do anything ridiculous. Um, so yeah. using big 4x4 attitude adjusters um, as the legs and I've put adjustable feet on it mainly because I need this workbench to be uh, level when I actually build the boat. At the moment it, the surface just needs to be flat. I'm also tying the legs in across and longitudinally and putting some casters on so I can actually roll the bench around to different areas in my workshop depending on um, on the requirements. Um, I've got, well, basically four pairs of legs. Uh, most of the uh, strength is, well, most of the structure is in the middle where it's going to be heaviest. And um, yeah, I'm just tying it all in, as I said earlier, rough as guts, but level and um, level and square and plump. Alrighty, uh, I've got to apologise. I think a life of using antidepressants and um, calmatives have a tendency for me to sound quite doughy. So, my apologies. Okay, this bench is going to be 16 pineapples long. I normally use the metric system for a lot of my work because basically it's a better system than this, this old school you know, imperial system. This bench needs to be as long as the boat. So it needs to be at least 16 pineapples long. So I've made it 16 pineapples and um, it's going to be four pineapples wide, uh, which is, um, what's that? That's about 48, 40 uh, long and about 12, 20 wide. And I've Basically, it's two halves, and I'm working on the second half of the bench uh, here, and the building jig needs to be accurate, and with the CNC machining, of, it's going to be inherently accurate, and with the way that Francois Vivier 
developed his plans. It's so easy to build. Just, again, more lengths of timber, more legs. Just nail it in, screw it down, and get it done. So, yeah, uh, now once I've finished the framing here, I'm going to get on to building the, um, the boat. Alrighty, the bench is finished off camera. I basically put two sheets of 9mm melamine on the top of it to make a flat surface. And now I'm actually going to start building the thing. I'm going to start building the centerline timbers or the backbone of the boat. Uh, it's called a whole bunch of different, um, it's, yeah, it's called a whole bunch of different things depending on where you, where you come from. Centerline timbers, uh, backbone, false keel, etc. You can call it pretty much anything you want. And Seeing as though it's the case that you can call it anything you want, I'm going to call it the Pirate Ninja. Now, it's the timbers made and um, cut by a CNC machine that run along the centre of the boat. And it gives the shape from bow to stern, front to rear of the actual boat. It gives it this shape. You won't see very much of it in the finished uh, product, but you will see the lower parts and the uh, yeah the lower parts and the front bit. Um, and what this does, the centerline timbers, is it gives me a foundation to build everything else onto, uh, to hang um, my frames on, which will give more shape, the three-dimensional shape to the boat, and to actually start building the foundation of the boat. Francois did a really streamlined thing where he designed in some aligning marks or lining pins within all the parts of this boat. So I was able to fit little drill bits in the holes and that way the parts were aligned. I then put some dominoes in there and these dominoes were left in there, keeping the parts aligned while the epoxy was curing. Now, the epoxy I'm using is a paste epoxy, so it is actually an adhesive. And I didn't really need much um, analytical chemistry to work with this stuff. Basically, what I did was I eyeballed it. Simple bucket chemistry. One glob of the resin, one glob of the hardener, mix it up. I decided to mix it on the boat parts because, well, saves on cleaning. And then I just mixed it and spread it with a, um, with a trout or one of those toothed um, scrapers that you can use for, uh, for pretty much anything spreading glue onto, uh, onto surfaces. And then... What I did was, once I've glued everything up, and I glued on both sides, I'm able to, as you, uh, you're seeing me here, I'm able to just basically pick the two parts. They're going to be aligned with the dominoes and put the thing together. see the dominoes that were set up when I started here are able to be put in put in both slots of the of the part here I'm doing the uh, bow section or the front half of the of the uh, boat you can see at the bottom of the screen it's the very the the stem which is the pointy uppy bit at the bow and it was just a little bit of playing around to get these dominoes to align. And you'll see me slap, um, slap this last one in. There we go. And then I can push the part into, into position. 
Now the great thing about these dominoes is that they'll stay within the part. They may not add very much strength to the actual build, but I'm not really worried about that. I was more worried about the parts moving relative to each other when I put some mass down on, to, um, on top of it. So once I'm at this point, the part just needs to be weighed down with some stuff. And before I did that, I flush trim cut just with my little flush trim saw the the tall bits of the dominoes off they and that's flush to the to the two bits I'm working on here and then basically covered it with some epox uh, covered it with some plastic sheets and weighed it down and that was the that was uh, what I did for all the all the bits for these uh, for this pirate ninja timber uh, the, <laughs> There were a lot of pieces of timber that I needed to glue, you know, prepare, glue, wait to cure, prepare the next part, wait to cure, prepare the next part. Yeah, it was a rinse and repeat for a couple of weeks there. And you can see me build up more of the centerline timbers. Just the same deal, more dominoes, more goop, mix it up, spread it out, weigh it down, wait to cure. And that's how I did it. The center of the boat there is a centerboard case which is basically pretty much a hole in the middle of the boat so really my centerline timbers were divided fore and aft um, in front of and behind this uh, centerboard timber and in the middle there's a uh, there's this gap and this gap is, I'll go into more reasons why I need this gap in the next episode. But it makes things kind of interesting when I, when I uh, work on actually closing the two halves of these timbers, to, um, two halves up, because there will be a sort of case in the middle of it. So the way I went about this was I generally fitted all the parts so I had two halves and then I'm going to close the centerline timbers up for a full assembly at the very very end with the particular parts that are with the particular preparations I need for the center centerboard case here I'm doing the very aft of the boat you can see I've glued a few parts up and I'm assembling it onto one of the yeah into the long bit so now what i have here is i have two large one half of the center line timbers all ready to go for my next project <laughs>
most of the centerboard timbers fitted. Now I have to work on the centerboard case. So I'll leave it there for this episode. Um, respectfully, I'll ask you to like and subscribe and do all that YouTube stuff. And um, yeah, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.